we're going to start with a matchup in Columbus, Cody. I was there. I was there <laughs> up close in person. Michigan State versus Ohio oh, State. And Cody, when I mean this one was over from start to finish. Listen, them three, them three, them three wide receivers Good that Ohio luck. State has, man. Them three amigos. Listen, them three amigos a different breed, Cody. Hey, them, listen them, here, them bro. Jo- them, jo- them jokers there. That's something I want to talk about on this show that I, it's a trend that I noticed in college football. You don't see it as much in the NFL, but I'm seeing it more in college football. When you got three offensive skill players, whether it be two receivers, one running back, uh, a running back receiver and a, and a quarterback, if they can get a hundred yards a piece, good luck stopping them. And the, the crazy thing about Ohio State is they got three receivers every single week that's going to get you 100 yards. You can bank on it. And anywhere from 20 to 30 receptions and at least four touchdowns. Like, they're in that every single week. Then you add in their running game with their two, two-headed two monster running back. Like, it's just crazy, man. I've seen something where they said Stroud completed 18 straight passes. He, he broke the record. He broke, he the, broke record. the record. I, and they and they said it on the time I was up in the um in the in the media press box, uh, they say he broke the record for most completions, uh, straight completions, right? And I and I went to think about all the people that didn't been went to Ohio State, and I was like, my goodness, bro, the man went thirty two for thirty five, four hundred and thirty two yards and six touchdowns, and didn't really. He played about a, not that much in the second half. So basically, that's one half of football. Man, listen, you know what I mean? What is that? Is that 24 minutes or 30 minutes? How many minutes per quarter does college play? No, they go 15. They go 15. That's in 30 minutes, bro. They scored on their first seven possessions. Game's over. Listen, Game's <laughs> over. Bro, listen, I'm telling you right now. I'm sitting there witnessing it. And Michigan State, man, they messed up. They had a they had a third down situation. Uh, well, no, no, I had a I think it was first or second down, and Ohio State DBs played press across the board. Mm-hmm. So the the inside and the outside guy, it was like a little, it wasn't a bunch formation, but they, the receivers were condensed a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. So the outside corner and the inside corner on number three was like at probably about four or five yards. Mm-hmm. The the middle corner, the slot guy was playing like three, three and a half yards, right? So they yeah. ran, they tried to run like a, a pick play. First of all, it bothered me because nobody at the wide receiver position understood the concept of the play and what to do to get each other open. Mm-hmm. And then secondly, the quarterback predetermined who he was throwing that football to before the play even happened. Mm. Because number one that was lined up outside came across the middle of the field and all he had, and there was no defender backside Mm-hmm. All he had to do, basically, it was like a triple seam concept, but they got to it a weird way. All he had to do was just throw that football over to the left side of the football field to that pylon, and that would have been a touchdown. Mm. That would have been a touchdown. Mm. But Ohio State, CJ Stroud, CJ Stroud took another step to the Heisman, and I think he has the easiest path now because that was a top 10 win. He showed out. They got another top 10 game this week against Michigan. And when they play, uh, if they win this game, I mean, I mean I'm just assuming things. They right, win this right, game, right. Right. and they'll probably end up playing if Wisconsin beats Minnesota, Wisconsin mm-hmm. in the Big Ten championship game. They're probably going to be ranked in the top 10, if not top 11. That'll be three games in a row. He has to make a case to be the Heisman, man. Man, listen, and that's why I asked you. I said, it's a race. Like, if, <laughs> if anybody else is on his level for the Heisman race, please show me him. Because this young man has been playing out of this world. Like last week, this week, this, I mean, this last game, they scored on their first seven drives. The week before that, if I'm not mistaken, they scored on their first six or seven drives. Like they're coming out the gates so fast. They're coming out like Mike Tyson back in his day. They coming out and they punching so hard and so fast, nobody can handle it. And I got to give it up because I've been very critical of them. We we talked about last week if Ohio State's defense can just be adequate. And when I tell you they cut Kenneth Walker, who I think is the best running back in the country, they cut his water off. He had six carries 
for 25 yards. And I know a lot of it may have had to do with them getting down with early head. They had to get away from the run game. But still, when you hold a guy to that caliber, to 25 yards, you doing the damn thing. And not only that, Harry, their defense had nine tackles for loss and 12 passes defended. Like, that's active. That's guys running around, making plays. That's a defense whose sword is getting sharpened every day oh, by yeah. playing against Stroud, those two running backs, and that hell of a trio yep, at receiver. Yep. 12 passes defended is amazing Bro, for a defense. I'm going to tell you this. You want to know what I wrote in my notes defensively? D-line, D-line started the game off. They set the tone. Yes, sir. Tyreek yes, Smith at defensive end, Zach yes, Harrison, the other defensive end, Haskell Garrett. The first play of the game, bro, Michigan State runs the football. Haskell Garrett, they did tackle, hit, hit, hit the guard with a swim move, got in the backfield, disrupted everything. Now, he didn't make the tackle, but he showed disrupted the play. Right. And then a few plays later, they tried to run, Michigan State tried to run a quick out, right? Zach Harrison, boom, batted it down. Mm-hmm. And then they tried to run a zone read. They tried to run a zone read, and um, Tyreek Smith, that's how I know the boy athletic as hell, man. Tyreek Smith, the quarterback's reading the end, so they're not blocking him. Mm-hmm. He's, right? he's, they're not he's, block- he's free. He screams down the line of scrimmage to go get the back. The quarterback keeps it. Where you think you're going? He, he adjusted himself and still made the tackle. Where you think you're going? And, and that's I, the most They important. set the tone, bro. They set the tone. These DNs and outside linebackers that they have playing now, are the best athletes on the field. To be able to change direction at the weight and height that these guys are and jump up or slide and go make a tackle or run down, straight down the line and go get somebody from behind, it's out of this world. And that's why I wanted to shout out Ohio State's defense as a whole, but I'm glad you gave it up to their front guys because as a former defensive back, we always used to say, Pass coverage and rust goes hand in hand. That's right. Sometimes when a DB makes the play, it's because one of those big boys up front got pressure and got his hands up and altered the throw. Sometimes when the big boys up front get a sack, it's a coverage sack because the corner That's of the right. state put it down. So to see Ohio State putting it together, man, I hope this defense can – I don't know if they can play like this every single week because – the way they played Saturday was was crazy. But if they can just keep getting better and and be adequate like we talked about, man, they can beat anybody. I think they can beat anybody because the way their offense scores is – I don't know if I've seen anything like it in college football, bro. Because it's you know, consistent week in and week out. You, you know what else I want to do? I, w- I want to reach out to some of these colleges and tell them, hey, man, I got a little flat fee. Y'all let me know if y'all want me to come in and, and, and teach your receivers about leverage – and about coverage and things to look for, there were so many time I, a times I've seen the Michigan State wide receivers. One guy had a, like a delta route, right? An over route across the field. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, if you line up at number three and the DB's in press coverage, you can't just run across the field. Mm-mm. The DB just going to undercut on your hip. Yeah, and, and bat the ball down. That's the, to be I honest with you, not bro- to cut you off, it, as a defensive back at three, the easiest route to cover is the over. Yeah. So I'm see, I'm looking at the receiver just run over there, and I'm like, at what point are you going to stair-step them or freeze them and look back at them to make them hesitate a little bit and then go over? No, they just running across over there. And I already mentioned the one about them not understanding how to pick certain guys and understand the concept of the play. So I'm like, bro, like what is – but it's stuff like this I'm seeing every week in college football. And, Cody, you know how hands-on and technical I am when it comes to the game and getting open and – and getting your teammates open. And I think that I think that really gets under your skin, bro. It does. Because you're somebody who was ultra talented, but that don't those technical I those was technical detailed, bro. You're talking about those details, <laughs> that's what took you to the next level and allowed you to play a decade. Like guys don't understand, it's hard to make it to the NFL, but to last as long as you did at that high of a level. Talent is not going to get you there. It's the details, man. The devil is in the details. And you see so many young men that think they're just going to out-athlete everybody. Don't work like that, man. Well, when you get to that next level, hey, them boy, you was the man at school. They the man at school over there. So what's going to separate you? The details and the little things. What you do when no one is watching. 
man. How you do one thing is how you do everything. A coach told me that. 